Hi, thank you for all my subscribers um, that have just come on board uh, to watch this video. I thought I'd just sit in front of the camera for a bit. Hopefully I've fixed my mic problem now and I've got a microphone sitting there so um, now you'll be able to hear me and probably all the ums I'm saying as well. I'm going to go through uh, the video and uh, do a little bit more explaining of what this power unit is and how I'm going to apply it and what the theories are because there's been a lot of questions in the comments so I want to answer some of those questions if I can and thank you for watching again. So what have we got here? Um, so you've got radio controlled boat motors um, you have hide that You've got one, two, three, from one side, four, five, six on the other. So that one module has six motors on it. And that module has also got these three this side, and three this side, speed controllers, ESCs, 200 amp ESCs, but I won't be drawing anywhere near that from them. So they're a bit overpowered for this, but it's just so they don't get too hot. And they've got the fans on top as well. Plus I'll be monitoring the uh, temperatures of not only the ESCs but also the motors as well so I can turn the water cooling on because each one of these motors being boat motors three kilowatts each have um, a feed in and out uh, for water so I can take the heat away from it um, so it doesn't get too hot also if there's a fault or uh, for efficiencies I can actually remove that motor away turn this whole circuit off so that motor, that speed controller and its battery are all switched off so there's no uh, problems with that. So for redundancy uh, it's ideal because you can take out 20 odd motors and run with four if you really wanted to. There's plenty of torque in these motors to move the vehicle. Um, with regards to the end plate, where did I get rid of that? Let's start from the end plate, that's probably easier. So you've got an end plate and that will bolt directly onto the um, housing of the gearbox, possibly through another end plate. I haven't looked at that side of it yet. And hopefully I have some splines on the drive shaft because this is a steel drive shaft. Splines on the drive shaft that will fit directly into that gearbox. Um, I know you could have um, a, a shaft adapter between that and the other shaft or um, some sort of dampening or something in between there uh, but it's going through to the clutch in any case so hopefully that will sort it out and so long as I get that nice and square uh, there, there won't be any vibration and it can directly drive it um, so behind this end plate this end plate's aluminium uh, so behind that end plate like that well, inside that end plate is a bearing so that's your main shaft bearing uh, and then you've got a bearing cap holding that bearing in as well that's bolted. This bit is bolted to that um, end plate holding the bearing in. So hide that as well. So behind that on this shaft uh, is a pressure plate and that is pushing on this collet here. So if I edit that here, you should be able to see the collet in this diagram. So behind there, is a collet that sits inside that main gear here and that collet will uh, apply pressure to both the shaft and the gear hopefully holding it um, uh, strong enough with friction if there is any slippage uh, or damage or anything like that um, that collet will probably be the first to go and it will just slip on that so it won't damage everything else on the power unit uh, edit the main part so back on this, that's the pressure plate that bolted directly to the gear. So as that rotates, um, it rotates with the gear. So if I hide that, uh, then you've got the collet behind it. So the collet's there. So constraints on that. Uh, mate it to that. Let's hide, uh, suppress that. So I'll pull that collet out, supposedly. Yeah, pull that collet out. 
and you can see that that gear is tapered hopefully if I look on the end hide that collet then you can see that the gear is tapered so the collet pushes into there and as that plate forces it further in so it pushes against the gear uniformly around it and onto the shaft I didn't want to um, cut into the shaft any keyways or anything like that because it will not only reduce the strength of the shaft but also it will interfere with the balance of it so if I'm doing 7000 RPM um, and I've got some vibrations and that translates into the bearings it translates into the body and all sorts of things so I'm trying to get this as balanced as possible hence why the gears are this nylon with glass fill 30% glass fill so if I hide that and as I said if you wanted to remove that gear you just need to rotate this arm uh, and that lifts the gear away from the uh, teeth of the main gear so you can disconnect disengage that uh, motor whenever you wish um, so if there's a fault or you want to do some cruising and reduce the amount of friction through the whole unit you can remove a number of these devices and only run on say four if you're cruising down the motorway at 70 miles an hour and that means you can switch off the batteries the ESC's and the motors uh, without any drama so if I hide that again so this item here so I'll lock into place there um, so it won't go any further but the line between this hole and this hole is behind this hole so if this tries to force its way out so if that gear um, is putting a lot of power into the the 60 teeth gear then there's a chance that this will try and pull itself out of that position So that's the shaft there. So there's three motors facing one way and the other three motors facing the other way. Uh, so that's one power unit. So there's another gear there. So there's only three motors. So there's three, six, nine kilowatts going through that gear there, but on three different faces of it. Uh, and there's nine kilowatts this side um, doing the same at this one, obviously uh, rotating the other direction so there's four of these modules one two three four of these modules that are 18 kilowatts each so that's roughly about 100 horsepower that that can put out you'd probably use about 10 to 20 percent of the power most of the time driving the gearbox being a torque converter the final driver the gearbox being a torque converter um, it will convert that torque up um, the amount of torque that these motors have got anyway and 24 of them put through this shared through equally through um, eight gears on collets uh, and then it goes through the dry shaft and then through the gearbox to convert that torque <laughs> with regards to the water i can turn the water on and off i don't know to either each motor possibly do each motor it depends on the pumps or a bank of motors so I'll do the six motors there so feed them in parallel through to a tank of water and then get that tank of water through to um, a radiator or something like that so they'll be feeding into the tank of water the tank of water will be fed to a radiator uh, and then you'll get nice cool water coming back through uh, that can be fed back into these motors again so there's, there's a bit of a cycle there and each one of these would be fed into the same tank each one of these modules. Um, my idea is to use these modules um, so you can upgrade it. So if at the end of the month you want to upgrade to another module or upgrade, put another three motors in or upgrade the motors, just change these parts if you wanted to change the motors or change the ESCs or something like that, you know, for something better on the market. Um, it makes it cheaper to upgrade and people to mod and things like that. And then um, at the end of the month when you get your paycheck you could um, buy more parts for it and upgrade it and then have a bit more power so every month you could build up the power on it so it's a bit like modifying a radio controlled car or something like that and it's all off the shelf parts so if anything changes in the future 
you don't have to change the whole lot. You just change one little unit at a time. Weight wise, you're looking at this unit alone with all the kit on it is about 66 kilograms uh, for 100 horsepower. Um, and it's not a huge unit. So if I pop the end plate on, that's it, and measure between this plate and this plate. Could have done it on the shaft, but that goes into the gearbox. Uh, then you're looking at a total length of 665 centimeters, 658 mil. So that's not very big um, for a size of unit. And it's quite easy to put another one of these the other way around on the top of this. So you've got a diamond shape at the end effectively. And then put it through another plate with maybe a belt stage um, to put the dry shaft out to the gearbox there. So you've got 100, uh, 200 horsepower. And you could just keep adding and adding and adding if you really wanted to. Um, see how much space I've got in the MGF first. So that's where I'm at with it. Um, if there's any questions or anything like that, feel free to put them in a comment and I'll see if I can get around to answering them after that. Also, if you like this project, please feel free to check out my Patreon page and support me on there uh, if you wish uh, for additional or early content. Um, you can even directly contribute to these projects by discussing them or even discussing your own projects. So please feel free to check that one out or even my uh, webpage at dev255.uk. Um, I've got a lot of projects on there, uh, past and present, and some for the future as well. Thank you very much for watching.